This episode of the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast is brought to you by Groundhog Day is an event, not a business strategy. Are you ready to finally solve those pesky issues that keep holding back your business success and never seem to go away? Embrace the power of the spring formula that unearths the issues and opportunities burrowed beneath the surface and grow your business so you thrive from your intersection of your brilliance and your passion. Claim your copy today at www.thegroundhogbook.com. Welcome to the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Join us as we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who reveal what they are doing to make the world a better place by being part of it. Be sure to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now sit back, lean in, tune in, get your notepad and two pens ready, and let's get started. Hi, my name is Adam Homey. I am your host, and I am once again honored by your wise decision to tune in and invest in yourself here at the Brilliance Plus Passion Project. Many of you who've been tuning in for many of these episodes have seen Princess Alessandra, who is one of our production supervisors. She is joining us once again, trying to get her to lay down and be calm, because we have a very interesting conversation for you today. This is going to be one of the very exciting installments in the Brilliance Plus Passion Project. Our guest is, let me just uh, let me just get Alessandra here out of the way here real quick. Um, our guest is Diane Calabrese. And just to tell you a small amount about Diane, she's an author, professional, recreational therapist, holistic therapist, who has been working in the field for over 30 years. She teaches as an online adjunct professor with FIU. She's written two books, and these books are about holistic healing modalities used in practice, of which she is certified in many. There's so much more that Diane's going to tell us, and we're going to let her share in her own words. Diane Calabrese, such a pleasure and an honor to have you here today. Thank you very much for having me, Adam. I appreciate you, it. <laughs> you bet you. So the first thing that we like to ask our guests is, how does the work that you do make the world a better place for your clients, customers, and the world at large? Well, as a recreational therapist, um, you we do a lot of different types of activities to help yeah. people either socially, mentally, or physically, um, depending on their disability. Um, now I'm retired, but I teach. So, um, so part of my job now is, is mentoring other people to learn how to do recreational therapy and, and, and promote healthcare. But I got into writing and, um, I just hope to, you know, continue helping people through doing that. Um, just, giving them coping skills, you know, different, uh, you know, letting them know what's out there to help uh, with stress and anxiety, depression, um, because there's so much anxiety in the world today um, that we live oh, in. Yeah. It's, it's a busy place and so much going on. And um, so a lot of different techniques help. And um, that's what recreational therapists do, try to find what, tune into what um, their talents or their gifts are. So. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So in your own words, what is it you actually do? I alluded to it, but let's hear you describe it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, recreational therapy is you really, um, you, we do leisure counseling and we try to uh, find out what the client enjoys most, what mm -hmm. their talents are, what their interests are, be it uh, a physical activity or a social activity. Um, you know, it could be art, it could be music, it could be uh, holistic healing, it could be doing meditation. So the list goes on. But, you know, these type of activities, they help people cope and to get people focused on, um, you know, just something that they enjoy to, to distract them, to, to get them away from the stress of everyday life. And that's what gets yeah. us through life, you know. So um, and when we don't have those coping skills, that's where you know, um, sometimes we see anxiety come in or depression come in and with things that we can't handle. So, um, sure. 
those those tools are important. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are a few of the frequently asked questions you get from folks who are considering working with you? Um, well, it's funny because, well, sometimes they say, what is recreational therapy? <laughs> and so I, I explain it like I just did. Um, and it's just really just learning what your talents are. Um, sometimes they'll ask me, do you need a degree for that? And, you know, I'll say, yeah, you know, we, we do get a bachelor's degree and you, you do get a national certification. Um, the certification uh -huh. is good for all of the United States and Canada. Um, and uh, we work in healthcare facilities. You know, we work in rehabs, we work in hospitals, nursing homes, um, sometimes fitness centers. It depends. There's different aspects to it. Um, you can work in the community. Um, you can work, um, you know, with children and youth programs. So there's a lot of different things that you could do with that type of uh, degree. So, um, yeah, that's one of the main questions that we, what we, what we get. So, um and also, it, it you know, what what particular what is like holistic healing? Because we do a lot of holistic healing modalities today. So I, um, you know, I focus in like on my book that I wrote, um, and we do this in groups as well. Like when we're working individually with patients or in groups, um, we just go through different, introduce them to different. Um, you know, mind, body, spirit activities that they could yeah. engage in. Cause sometimes they don't like one and they might like another. So it's kind of just feeling out what works for you, uh, whether it's Reiki or yoga or meditation. Um, so that's, that's pretty much, you know, you just kind of work yeah. through all those different things. What are a few questions you wish people would ask? Um, I would say, um, you know, am I able to do this? You know, um, I, because because a lot of times that confidence is is low, and they think, oh, I can't do this. But learning that they can, so um, knowing that you're capable of, you know, doing anything you want to, whatever whatever um, you have a desire to do, you can do. Um, so I wish they would ask that, and also knowing to trust your in intuition, you know, because a lot of times they don't know what their intuition is. Um, so, you know, just understanding that your intuition is, is, um, is your sense of knowing of what you want to bring to the table in life in general. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as we go to the second half of this, what we're going to do is we're going to switch it up and we're going to have some fun with this. Let me ask you a few questions that will help our listeners get to know you better as a person, Diane. And the first okay. of which is, what would people who know you be surprised to learn about you? Um, I guess probably just knowing I um, that I do have a very strong intuition. So I you can't really put much past me, you know, because I have I, I think I have the gift of like tuning into um, just feeling good energy versus negative energy. So, um, so sometimes you won't always know that about a person. So I can really like tune into that, you know, um, in other words, if somebody is not being completely upfront, I could, I could sense that, you know, and we all can, we all have that intuition ability, but, um, I think that's something that I'm more gifted at. Yeah. Right. Okay. So with that, what do you hope people say about you when you're not around to hear it? Um, I would just say that, you know, hopefully whatever activity or therapeutic intervention that I may have used with a patient or um, mentored, you know, a student with that they would um, be able to take that and, and, um, it would help them or they could learn to help use it with other people for, you know, coping skills, coping mechanisms. So I'm kind of at it from the transition of going from the recreational therapist, I'm more of a, t a teacher now and a writer. So I'm more of a mentor now than I am uh, a therapist now, but um, just really giving other students the confidence that they, they can go out there and do this and just to have the skills to do it and, and to have the confidence 
um, that they can help other people and, and, and how to go about that. And it's really by going through worksheets and, um, you know, reading up on different uh, skill sets and, and knowing that they can encourage other people to do that. That's great. That, that's, that's awesome. And if you could go back in time and change one thing you've done or one thing that's happened, what would it be and why? Um, I don't know. Probably, I, I don't know if I would change anything because I, I'm very religious and I, I feel that like God puts us here on this earth for a very specific reason. And part of our journey here being on the earth is just is, is not to never have failures. I mean, we all, and I don't like to call it failures, but like lessons, you know, and I think we learn from those lessons and it makes us a better person just growing as an individual. So I think every triumph that you've been through in life makes you a better person in the end. Okay. If you could meet some famous person alive or dead, (laughs) <laughs> what question would you have for them and who would it be? Um, oh, famous person. I, well, I, a famous, well, I would say Jesus. I would love to have met him. Um, I don't, I don't really, not so much with, um, I think, I think I would love to, to meet Jesus and like learn from him. But, um, as far as like celebrities or anything, I, I don't know, like when we say famous, I don't know if I would go you there. Can define, but, you can um, define that however you like. Yeah. <laughs> the, the beautiful part of the Brilliance Plus Passion Project and the series of questions we share with our guests is it gives you space to interpret it in alignment with your own truth, which is one of the core principles of all my work. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, knowing how I'm doing, you know, that's what I would want to know how I'm doing or what I could do for him more or what could I bring to the world, you know, more to the world. Yeah. If I were, yeah, if I were to take all the responses to this and go through the scores of people who participate in this project and just put them all on a spreadsheet, I believe that Jesus would come out number one with a bullet in terms of how many or what percentage yeah. of the guests chose Jesus. He seems to be like our runaway favorite for some reason yeah. or another. And I, <laughs> and see, I, you know, he's somebody I'd like to meet in person as well, uh, aside from the relationship I already feel I have with him. And I'd mm-hmm. like to know, I'd like to know a few things like for, like, for example, what actually happened that day you went into the temple and uh, with your whip and chased all those people out. And uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd also ask him what really went down with him and Mary Magdalene. And I'd also be very curious about uh, is it really the case that he went to a tavern with his buddies once, forgot his wallet, and when the server came over, said, oh, that's okay, we'll just have water, thanks, and then did this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not so, you know, I, I'm not so curious about the details, you know, of how, of of other than what's in the Bible, but I, I just feel that, you know, Jesus is there for everybody and he's everybody's best friend. And, you know, we will see him again in heaven. And, um, you know, there's so many different things, uh, in that's beautiful in life to, to, in everybody and everybody has a purpose. And, um, I just would love to just meet him just to have fun Mm -hmm. and just talk and not, not so much. I don't think details are so important. You I don't know. think that I don't think the, te- the details are important at all. I believe that many of the details of what happened there are metaphors mm. created to describe things for which they did not have the vocabulary at the time to accurately mm. depict what really happened. Yeah, I believe a lot of it's metaphor and illusion. That doesn't make it any less factual. And when you look at it through that perspective, it actually makes it more believable that it actually happened i get yeah yeah i I mean you you have some folks question the water and the wine thing but yeah that can certainly be done if my grandfather could make root beer in his basement jesus could certainly uh spare his host a beer run at the wedding i'm Mm -hmm. just saying yeah (laughs) yeah and i also bring Um, i also bring the point that jesus by all accounts was a very down-to-earth sort of guy there weren't a lot of uh vows and and these and all that it'd be it'd be that dude who just plopped down on the couch beside you and just hung out so he would he would talk like we're talking right 
Probably, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure. It's a, it's, yeah, it's the part of him that was human that made him so remarkable. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he was also perfect, so... Yeah, sin that's, free, uh, unlike unlike the rest of us. But yeah, you know, I know, but. I know. So what <laughs> motiv- So what motivates Diane? What motivates and inspires you to keep going when you're having a tough time or facing a challenge? Um, I I would say my faith and and just you know um, mm-hmm. knowing that none of it, you know I'm not perfect and and nobody's yeah. perfect in the world and we, it was you just have to move on to let it go and and that's what a lot of my meditations are about just letting like like stress go worries go whether it's financial worries relationships whatever um just let it go and just live a peaceful life you know just move on yeah. and don't harbor all that inside i'd like to go an extra two or three minutes if that's okay with you because this brings up an interesting sure. point uh, you you raised the issue of us learning to let go of things to embrace our imperfection and we covered mm-hmm. just a moment ago how Jesus was the only perfect person, all, all of which is great. Uh, do you think that, the, what do you think happens to us that causes us to retreat within ourselves, to fall short as far as confidence and willingness or ability to move forward when it comes to our actual or perceived imperfections? Um. I think, well, I think just the human side of us, like we always, you know, some of us are, are more confident or, or in a different stage of life, we'll become more confident. And usually sure. as, as we grow older, we become more confident, but um, we're human, you know, and, and we have to recognize that in everybody and everybody has different strengths and different, you know, weaknesses. And sometimes we compliment other people's weaknesses and they, you know, compliment ours so um and we get along so learning from one another is very important um but also you know i would say just it's important to you know seek people that have the same values as you and also to um avoid negative energy because there's a lot of negative energy in the world and that tends to just eat you up (laughs) you know yeah, it does. And and you got to just stay away from that. So um, it's very hard, you know, because there's always there's always something going on in the world is there's a lot of hate or whatever. But we have to learn to overcome that. And sometimes you have to walk away from that, you know, yeah. and just, you know, let things go and move on, you know. So right. um, and, and that's part of coping. It, it's part of, you know. Um, if you're in therapy, you have to learn, you know, to make good choices, good decisions and friendships and good decisions in financially or how you live and, and how you're going to raise your children and who you're going to marry. And it could yeah. go on and on. So um, I think with every aspect of life, um, you know, you have to take that into consideration. So and it, it yeah. really does come down to good decisions, good choices. So I agree. I agree. So in a moment, I know you have an invitation for our listeners, and I'm going to extend that on your behalf. But let me ask you in general, what is one action that you would encourage our listeners to take today as soon as they finish listening to this? Um, well, I, I would say try to have a relationship with God. Uh, some people don't mm-hmm. believe in God. Um, but if you can't, just try to meditate and just try to enjoy nature, even if you could just start off that way, um, try doing meditation. Um, there's many meditations that are uh, neutral that are not so religious, but you can uh, just concentrate on your breath, just on your breathing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes mantra med- meditations help just saying, let it go, whatever it is, just let it go. Yeah. Um, and just release your stress that way. So, um, but there's all different kinds of holistic healing modalities, um, whether it's it's meditation or you could participate in yoga um, or fitness or aquatic therapy, whatever whatever it is um, that that you feel most comfortable with or most talented by, try it. You know, whatever works for you. Everybody's different. Sure. <laughs> Sure. So for everybody who is 
watching this on the YouTube channel, you can see a website that has now appeared at the bottom of the screen. For everybody who is on our website listening to this or is subscribed to one of the many syndication networks on which you'll find the Brilliance Plus Passion Project, the website I encourage you to visit is www.dian.com. Calabrese.com, and that's spelled C-A-L-A-B-R-E-S-E. Come to our website. You'll see it in the in the show description. And what you're going to find there are, among other things, Diane's social media sites so you can connect with her if you want to explore this topic further. You'll see her books, her audiobook download. And in addition to this episode, you'll see other interviews from radio and podcasts that I think you're going to find very intriguing. I'm also aware that Diane has a podcast of her own, and I th- encourage you to check that out. It could be a pretty interesting opportunity for you. And with that, Diane Calabrese, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been an honor, and believe me, in education. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Thank you for tuning into the Brilliance Plus Passion podcast, where we celebrate entrepreneurs, business creators, and brilliant minds who are making a difference for their community, market, and audience. Remember to visit our website at www.brilliancepluspassion.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Brilliance Plus Passion Podcast. Oh,